Good Thursday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com mailbag edition of the podcast presented by Blue Water Climate Control. First, Blue Water Climate Control wants to thank uh, everybody from VolQuest, all the listeners, for their refers, referrals to the website. Blue Water Climate Control gets more referrals to their site from VolQuest than any other source by far. And to show their appreciation, VolQuest listeners get discounts on all services and repairs, which is really good because it's time to start turning on your AC. And unfortunately, that might not work like it should. When that happens, you need to do what many others are doing. They call Blue Water Climate Control. Read all the reviews. You'll see the story after story. Other companies tried to fix it, but Blue Water did it right. Call the guys who do the right repair the right way the first time. Blue Water Climate Control at 865-299-2290. Also, you can schedule a spring heating and air tune-up blue, with Blue Water Climate Control between now and the spring game, and your name will be entered into a drawing to win two vol passes. That's two tickets to all eight Tennessee home games. Refer a friend and increase your chances to win. The drawing will be held on April 26th. Call 865-299-2290 or go to bluewaterclimatecontrol.com to schedule your appointment today. With Rob Lewis and Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubbs. Glad to have you with us on this mailbag edition and we'll jump right into the questions and we'll start out of the gate with Voice of Nalen who wants to know the single most important player on defense who has to step up if this team is going to have a chance to be uh, competent and be able to compete defensively. I'm going to go first here, and I'm going to say Tyler Barron, and from the standpoint of the ability to get to the quarterback, I think that, you know, there's obviously linebacker questions that are going to be very hard to answer. Secondary concerns, I think, remain out there. I think if you look at college football, you look at Tennessee history, when defenses have been at their best, they can answer shortcomings. They can cover up shortcomings in the secondary or linebacker coverage if you can get to the quarterback off the edge. So for me, the single most important player on defense is somebody who can get to the quarterback off the edge. And I think the best candidate for that's going to be Tyler Barron. He just got to up his game from a year ago. He's definitely the the candidate, Brent, that, you know, has the most experience um, playing because he did play so much a year ago. Uh, not to piggyback you, but to kind of piggyback you, I'm going to go Byron Young. You bring a kid in from junior college, he t- plays the same type of position. I think those two guys need to work in unison, but I think Byron Young needs to be kind of, you know, the 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 yin to the yang for Tyler Barron to give him some help so they can't key in on Tyler Barron. So I think, you know, for me, I'd go Byron Young, a kid that, you know, that comes from the Juco route that you hope to have some juice off the edge. Rob Lewis, what did it say you on defense? I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm going to, I mean, I don't have anything different to add. I mean, I think it's an edge rusher. I don't know. I wouldn't single out Tyler Barron or, or Young or Morvin Joseph. I just think that's the position. I don't, more so than the any specific individual. But yeah, I mean, it's getting to the quarterback effect. I mean, because you're going to have a lot of problems. I don't, I don't want to sound too, too down, but I think you're going to have some shortcomings on defense and, a good pass rush can clear up a lot of problems before they happen. Now, here's an interesting question. Can this team find, and maybe it's not a true edge guy that everybody has to, you know, chip or they have to slide protection to help. Can this team be a really good blitzing team and affect a quarterback that way? We saw that sometimes with some of John Chavis's defenses that um, we're obviously really good at, at, at blitzing the quarterback, really good linebacker blitzing teams that maybe they didn't have a great edge guy, but because of the way their linebackers could blitz, they could get to the quarterback. Can they, can they find one? Is that Morvin Joseph? Can they find somebody like that uh, to be an effective player? Because even when Tennessee blitzed a year ago, Rob, they didn't get to the quarterback. Even when they brought extra people, they weren't getting to the quarterback. So um, maybe schematically Tennessee can find something or they maybe can find some personnel at linebacker who, who can effectively blitz the quarterback because they couldn't a year ago. I, mean, I may be missing somebody, but as far as like when you're not talking about, you know, an edge guy like Daryl Taylor, Sean Schamberger, maybe the, the best blitzer that, or most productive blitzer that, that Jeremy Pruitt had in his time here? Probably is. I mean, that, says, that, that paints a pretty you know, grim picture of what they've been able to, to generate in terms of pressure when, you know, when it wasn't just Taylor. Yeah, I thought, I thought they could have used Batuli more in that role his senior year than, than what they did, but that, that's water under the bridge. And obviously he's not here and that defensive scheme is not here. But uh, point being, the most important defensive player to me is, is somebody who can get to the quarterback or affect the quarterback because that guy can help out multiple positions on the defense by, by disrupting the quarterback and forcing him 
to make a quicker decision than he wants to and, and all of those types of things. Uh, to the next one we go, uh, when's the spring game? How many fans are going to be allowed to attend and do they need to buy tickets? That's a great, and may sound like a crazy question, but it will be interesting to see how they do tickets because typically that's just walk up, you know, and, and go. But if you're going to limit the crowd, do you have to do tickets this year? How are they going to do that? What do you think the number is going to end up being that they're going to allow? Um, I, I don't know. I don't think they can do tickets um, if you're, you know, wanting to have recruits come because normally recruits could just come and, and you would have them, you know, down on the field and that kind of, you won't be able to do that this year. So, but if you're wanting recruits to come and sit in the stands and watch your team play, which a lot of teams are, I don't think you can do tickets per se because then that would be facilitating, um, you know, you know, a recruit to come to your game in some form or fashion. So even, I, even if you did a free ticket for everybody first come, well, you're right. I don't know. I mean, that's going to be, I mean, I, I don't think you have to worry about it because I think the capacity is going to be allowed more than the number of people that want to show up for the game. Yes. Uh, ultimately, I think that's what, I, I think that's where the university and, and the county government will get it to Rob is they'll get it at a number high enough that they won't have to worry about turning people away now what that number ends up being you know remains to be seen but i think that's the smartest and probably the safest way to do it right and get that number yeah. high enough so you don't worry you don't have to worry about somebody being sent home or, or turning somebody away you're at, or you're quote at capacity yeah i, I strongly suspect it. i mean I, it, I think it'll be a lot more than it was in the fall i mean maybe even double what it was in the fall but you know i don't know that you know forty four thousand people would show up for the spring game if you if you let them yeah, I don't. I mean, that's not been the case in, in years past. So uh, we'll see if that happens. Uh, to football, we go. Is Whitehead a good candidate to move to linebacker? I would say yes, Austin Price, but it doesn't sound like um, at least Coach Banks wasn't ready to discuss any potential moves of guys to different positions when he met with the media earlier this week. So it doesn't sound like if, if that's going to happen, it's going to happen soon, right? Yeah, I don't think that would happen before at least week three or week four of spring ball. You know, I, I think ultimately, if it happens in spring ball at all, I think they're trying to let some of these kids, you know, work the kinks out, let them learn a position and see where they, you know, where they are as far as the staff and liking kids at that position. You know, I don't think they want to just like judge them on four or five practices. I think they'd let to let them get probably at least 10 practices. So that's two thirds of spring ball. And before they truly judge them. Um, so you know, uh, he is the best candidate because he played it in high school. You know, like T. Hodge didn't really play linebacker at Maryville. Um, and, and D. Beckwith played kind of, you know, safety and, and and quarterback in high school for down there in Florence. All right, on to the next one. We go after practice on Tuesday in the two-minute drill. Austin mentioned that some players look to be trying out some new positions. Who were those guys he was referring to? Also, he mentioned that Aubrey Solomon slimmed down and looked be in better shape. Were there any other players that caught your eye as far as body changes since last season? Also, I think what he means here, what you said in the two-minute drill, is you saw some guys working maybe at some different spots, but, quote, not new positions. What I'm saying, somebody was working at left tackle or left guard or right guard, left tackle that way. Not somebody had flipped from tight end to receiver or from running back to linebacker or, or something like that. I mean – some guys at defense, one defensive end, you know, strong side versus weak side defensive end. Some different looks that way, which Coach Banks talked about. They had done some and were going to do more. But, but in terms of wholesale moving a guy to a complete different position, we have not seen that to this point. Besides Solomon, anybody else caught, catch your eye in terms of how their body looked? Anything jump out at you? I thought Elijah Simmons looked really, really good. Um, I kind of expect him to flash this year. Um, I mean, he's never going to be small. Don't get me wrong. It, it, it looks like a mountain of muscle. Okay. To me. Yeah, I, go, um, I, I just, I'm sorry. You, you have somebody else, AP? Well, I was going to say, I think the, the guys he's talking about were Morvin Joseph, who was playing inside now and had played outside with the last staff. Um, and then uh, Bryson Eason, who was, uh, you know, playing kind of combo D end uh, outside backer for this team for his last, the last team he played more inside. Um, and then like, as hub said, the offensive lineman Cade switching from right guard to left guard, that type of thing. 
I was just going to talk the linebacker talk, maybe, maybe wonder when's the last time we've seen a running back move to linebacker and, and have success. I mean, we used to, it used to happen all the time routinely with uh, under Chavis. I mean, Westmoreland, Dominique Stevenson, Eddie Moore, all those guys, you know, high school running backs. When, when, can you remember one? And it just made me think about that in recent history. It's not happened as much lately, that's for sure. And I wonder if that's because kids specialize more in high school now than, than they used to. Maybe that's part of it. You don't, not as many guys play both ways when it used to be commonplace. Yeah, I mean, you know, Crouch was interesting because he was, you know. Yeah, that's a good one. He was, he was talked about such a – but everybody knew coming in, Rob, he was going to go to linebacker, so that wasn't a move. I mean, he was he, he picked Tennessee because they were letting him play linebacker or giving him the chance to play linebacker. So it's not the same as what you're you're talking about there. Uh, I, I think you make a good point in the specialization. I think the other thing too is I think kids are less willing to move. Well, I, I think there's transfer. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in their heads, and I, I don't I don't think kids are as you know I think it's harder to get a defensive lineman to go to offensive guard than it used to be or a running back to go to, to linebacker than it used to be because, um, you know, those guys have specialty prepared for that specific position that they're playing. And, and I just don't think a lot of those guys are, are necessarily really interested in, in moving spots the way that, you know, used to, it's wherever they put you at, you know, you went out there and you played. And um, that's just kind of not, not been the case the last few years. And I don't think you see a ton of that stuff happening um, around the country. I mean, think about it. Alante Taylor was a guy who played, um, defensive back here came in as a wide receiver. He would be one, but you haven't seen a ton of those guys, even at the receiver to defensive back adjustments like you've seen, um, you know, in, in years past as well. So um, I just think it's a little bit of the sign of the times. Um, to, we knew there would be a Dane Davis question here, uh, Austin Price, so get, <laughs> so get ready. Um, I don't want to take offense to Dane Davis, but he is he getting first team reps ahead of Calvert more about what he's doing or more about what Calvert isn't doing to date? Or is that just everything about the tackle position? So, uh, first of all, give everybody the backstory that you know on Dane Davis, and then we'll talk about how first team reps on the first day in full pads probably don't mean a whole lot. But give a little backstory on Dane Davis. Well, Dane Davis, big kid, Upper East Tennessee, Sullivan East. Um, you know, and the, the last staff did take a, a lot of pride in trying to bring in quality walk-ons. Look at a guy like Kenny Solomon, who had got offers from Louisville and some other schools. He turned down that to come here and walk on. I eventually earned a scholarship. Um, but they took great pride in that. Remember Jarius Abercrombie, who's no longer here, but he was a big, big offensive tackle that they had. Um, so, like, Dane Davis is one of those. Just kind of, you know, blue collar, worked his way into, you know, getting a little bit of run here, at least early in, in, in spring ball. And uh, I think it's kind of all of the above. I mean, I think Dane Davis has kind of, you know, again, worked his way into getting a little run. K. Ron, not been as quick to learn the new offense. And then two, they're just tackle situation or three, their tackle situations, you know, not great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they've got to find depth there. I mean, even if even if Calbert's a starter there, they've got to find depth. There. I mean, I mean they just I'll say money. this. K. Ron, to me, is a perfect candidate if things continue the way they are to not being here in the fall. Like, you know, I mean, he, he's toyed with leaving before. I think the new staff, he felt like a new lease on life. But if, if you're sitting here behind a guy like Dane Davis coming out of spring ball, then, you know – what's that say about your, your chances for fall? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it just seems like a per, he'd be the perfect candidate to look around. Yeah. I think that depends on what he does with the, the next 13 or 12 days of practice, yes. you know, I mean, Correct. obviously there's opportunity. There's opportunity abound for anybody who can play, have a pulse at the tackle position on the offensive side of the ball. So um, it's certainly there for the taking um, if, if whoever wants to go out and, and get it. And that includes, Dane Davis, and that includes Karon Calbert as well, um, and anybody else, you know, because I don't think that, you know, they want to play Cade Mays at left tackle, but you know what? That might be where they have to play Cade Mays when it's all said. Well, done, you know, I, you I know. think that makes the most sense, Brent. I really do. Like when you look at Tennessee's best five, like, you know, if Darnell continues to play better than he has played the first two years, you'll like the combination you have at guard with the three-headed monster of Spragans, Carvin, and um, and Cade, 
does it make sense to bounce Kate outside and play Carvin and Spragues at guard and Cooper at center um, to, to get your best five on the field? Like Carvin wasn't there on Tuesday, um, but that's because Carvin – um, you know, had to had to run back home for a little family deal. Uh, he'll be back in, in short order. And it's, a, it's, it's, you know, a positive, not a negative type thing. So he'll be back. And, and the staff really likes Jerome a ton. So like, to get your best five on the field, it probably makes the most sense to push Cade out to left tackle. All right. Where do you think this recruiting class ends up ranking wise? I don't have a clue. I think 15 to 25. I mean, okay. I think you'll get enough. 250 kids like Addison Nichols, Keaton, Wade, those type of players, you know, then to me it's like, you know, the Yolanda Cam Miller, the Yolanda Dallin Hayden, the Yolanda Isaiah Horton, um, you know, you know, the Yolanda Taven Jackson, the quarterback, the, you know, what, what can you get done with those type players? That's going to land you in that 15 to 25 range. All right, to hoops we go, Rob. Any thoughts on the situation with Jason Shea at ETSU? Don't know him personally, but know people who do, and by all accounts, a solid dude, and it sounds like an unfortunate situation. Uh, Jason's a friend of mine, and it is an unfortunate situation, and that's all, all I'll say on that other than the people – I've seen some people speculating on the board that, you know, there was some kind of impropriety off the court or something of that nature, and that's just – that's pure ignorance. It's not – Nothing to do. Very unfortunate situation. He got put in a tough spot, and I don't think got a lot of help from the administration. On to Deshaun 13. Any player you're keeping an eye on, not by necessity, but because they fit the system better or have transformed their body? Um, I think Elijah Simmons is a guy that we just mentioned uh, that that would make some sense to me, um, that I think Rodney Garner could could certainly find some – some production out of that uh, as as well. Uh, I still contend, and, and it may not be an impact, immediate impact, I still think Jalen Wright fits this offense. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just think athletically and the spread stuff, he, he just seems like he fits this offense, and I wonder how they find ways to use him. So that's a, that's a guy who's probably on down the road in terms of helping, but I just think that – I just think – his game fits this offensive system pretty well, or it should fit this. Well, sound, sounds like the same could be said for Jabari Small, at least in a small sample size, what the coaches have seen from him. AP, you got anybody? I, I, I tell you, too, you brought up right. I continue to hear he's flashed. The other guy that I've heard is that is flashed through, again, it's, you know, three practices in the fourth later today. And he did not flash when we were out there on Tuesday. In fact, he had, you know, two or three drops. But I've said – I've been told that during, you know, team periods and stuff, he's been really good. Caught a, caught a touch, deep touchdown the other day is Anderson Kobe, the uh, the junior college kid from the state of Mississippi. So, you know – That's this, the guy I nobody's think this talking team's, about, right, AP? Because they snuck him in at the end right before they all got fired? That's, for, that's right. That's right. It was actually after Jeremy got fired, but before – um, Danny White was hired is one of those, you know. <laughs> so, so, so does Kevin Steele get credit for him in the in the twelve days or eighteen days on the job? Joe Osavet and Kevin Steele combination <laughs> uh, get credit for Anderson Kobe. You know, and so we'll it's see what a happens. Nine hundred thousand dollar recruit, Rob Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you very careful. That could be interpreted. No, uh, it's not bad. Last staff, I'm that not be. interpreting that way. I'm just saying. Anyway, go that's ahead. A, that's a hell of a lot of Big Macs. <laughs> let's, AP, hey, hey, let's let's go with let's go with a little more details on on this kid. I probably should not have interjected that. Maybe we'll blame oh, that on. Geez. Maybe we'll blame that on some pain medication. Well, he, he yeah, no doubt. He he's a kid that just is a late bloomer. He just a, it's as simple as that. Like you know, went it went the JUCO route trying to you know, up his stock, could have went to some smaller level schools, but chose to go JUCO to up his stock and and then grew. He grew and he got faster. Kind of a late, late bloomer physically. And, uh, you know, the kid can run. I mean, I continue to be, you know, you, this team is going to be predicated on speed. That's why the one guy that I was kind of interested to see if this staff was, was Kenny Solomon because he's a track guy. He's so fast. 
you know, I just wondered if that would be something that like he, he could find a niche on this team because clearly they like speed. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And clearly this team needs to get more speed on the field. I, I think every coach in this program will tell you that something they're, they're looking for and something they quite frankly spent a good part of the winter off season working on even more than, than some of this, the weight room raw strength stuff was just agility and speed. Uh, in your opinion, what position is going to affect the success of this team more in 21, the linebackers or the quarterbacks? We at least have bodies at quarterback and the cohesion of offensive coaches. Thoughts? Guys, to me, it's a lay down, it's a quarterback, and it's not a Always. debate. Yeah. Not a debate. I mean, you can mask linebacker play, um, you know, with blitzes and going six defensive backs and get linebackers off the field. I, I think you can mask that. You can't mask bad quarterback play. No, because you can always you can always Brent um, bend but don't break, you know, and and force field goals. But teams are going to score, so you better be able to score with them. That's just the modern day college football. And if you know, it, it's really when you sit back and think about it, it's remarkable that Tennessee has had four straight years since the Josh Dobbs era of just the quarterback play being not very good. Yeah, well, and it's it's why we are where we are, uh, and 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 those two years with Dobbs were the high water marks, you know, back to back nine win seasons. And um, again, even if you've got the best running game in, in the country, Rob, you've got to throw it more than six or eight times a game. I mean, you, you can't line up and play the Todd Helton ninety four Georgia game or that Georgia that Mississippi State game with James Banks at quarterback that Tennessee rolled out there. That was a great game. Um, I mean, if you're going to beat some people that count, you're going to have to make a play at the quarterback position, which is why it's the most important position for this team to have success. I mean, look, just look no further than Georgia last year. How many NFL guys do they have at running back and, and on that offensive line? I mean, I don't know the number, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's a handful. And they were just an okay SEC t- team. It's all about quarterback play, no doubt. Uh, All right, Rob, here's the question uh, about basketball transfers. You knew this one was coming. How many transfers do you see Tennessee taking, and how would you break them down position need-wise, assuming Fulkerson is returning? Um, I I mean, I think think they could get crazy and go as high as four if it was the right four. Now, they won't take four just to to take four. But if if there's four guys they like, I could see them going that high. I think two or three is more – realistic if Fulkerson is I mean even if Fulkerson is back conversations I've been having strongly suggest that they want a shooter maybe first and, and foremost I think that hurt Mac, a Mac McClung is Mac McClung coming home he's not a shooter uh the kid but and the one kid announced on Wednesday night Parker Stewart that he was staying in Indiana I guess it had a good productive meeting with Mike Woodson uh, I think that's when Tennessee felt like they had had an end with because of the fact that his dad was Head coach at UT Martin. He was familiar with the area. Um, really, I th- they really like the kid from tra- the transfer from Auburn, Justin Powell. Um, I, I don't know what he's going to do or if he's if he's in a big hurry, but I think Tennessee feels like they've had some productive conversations with him. And I obviously think a big is 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 a huge need, even if Fulkerson comes back. I mean, I, yeah, they need shooting, but I think they need to add some size. They really like the kid from transferring from East Carolina. Name is escaping me right now. But they've had dialogue with him. Uh, the kid leaving Georgetown, they've had dialogue with him. Those are both guys that they're going to be heavily in pursuit of. So you think two's probably realistic, Rob? I, I think two's realistic. I think two's likely. Okay, three's and possible. I, four's three's probably possible. unlikely, right? I don't think they could find four that they that, that like. they would that they would like. But you could see a post sh- and maybe two shooters. Yes. You know, if, if they and, found some that they like, or, 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 to, or productive offensive player. Let me, let yeah, me refer to that. And that's what Fulker should come back, which, you know, people I've talked to this week, that's the way the vibe is going. Now, next week, it might be different. So okay. what are the numbers? What do the numbers look like? So you got – They got all kinds obviously, of – they can, they can have 15 on scholarship next year because of the COVID rules. So they, and, and I just didn't know. Count. I didn't – you were talking about four max or whatever, so I, I didn't know if that was including the high school kids like BHA. No, I, mean four, I, mean four tra- I need four transfers. Maybe yeah. I can see them bring it in. I'm not see. I'm not predicting for it. I'm saying that I think it could climb that high if they were to get gotcha. them. Now, does that number change if somebody reclassifies as a? No, I think I think they're working. They're they're working off. They're working off the and, number of four. Really. And Hat, Huntley Hatfield is a strong reclass candidate. Although you know, I think this transfer situation will be worked out probably before he decides. And the kid at Catholic 
is a reclass candidate and, and you know, he, he's a project. He's not going to make any kind of impact next year, but I do think that they are really serious about getting some rim protection, which he can provide. And this, do you think this roster is kind of done at this point other than Fulkerson? Or do you think that's still a possibility? No, I think there's one more. more there's one more transfer. You think there's more movement coming? All right. So uh, we'll there's see. for sure one more coming. All right. So we'll see what comes down the pike there uh, with, with the roster as that gets completed here. And then obviously Tennessee is scurrying around the country as everybody else is looking at different guys out there. All right. Who is who is your best guess for who will be our best pass rusher, best cover guy, top receiving option besides Valus, and the top rusher on this team? All right, let's go top rusher. Let's just let's just bounce off names right quick. Give me your top rusher guess. Jabari Small. He's gonna get more carries than the rest. I'll go with AP. Okay, I'm, I can't disagree with that one. Although I'm curious to see where Tyon Evans is and and how that one emerges, um, how he emerges throughout spring practice because uh, I think he's got enough talent there that that he could take some Jabari Small reps. But Small's obviously done some good things early. Uh, top receiving option besides Velas Jones. Does anybody take anybody other than Hyatt at this point? No, not. I think it's. it's I think that's a lay down, as you would say. Yes. Yeah. I think the question is who's going to be number three, and who who can emerge as their number three receiver um, in, in this offense. Uh, best cover guy for this team. I would say Alante. Not- Alante. I, I think Alante Taylor is going to break out this year, and here's why: because he and Jeremy were like oil and water. And I think a new voice helps that kid. And if you go back and you watch the Alabama tape and watch when he guarded Devontae Smith last year, the Heisman Trophy winner, he was actually really, really good in that game. And I think that he could potentially, with the right guy behind him, whether it be Willie Martinez, Tim Banks, whoever he wants to listen to, could really have a nice breakout season. Well, he's the most talented guy. I don't think there's any question about that. He's flashed the most skill and, and, and the most productivity. He just can't have those lulls. He just can't have those catastrophic fall asleep plays where he lets somebody get behind him late in the game or late in a half or, you know, on third and 11 or, or whatever. I mean, he just can't make that kind of mental mistake. If he can clean that up, then he's got a chance. And, and obviously, I'm sure he's betting on this as, as a contract year for him as well. Best pass rusher. I mentioned Tyler Barron early that he's got to get his pass rush skill improved can this be roman harrison i'm on byron young i'm gonna keep riding that train you're gonna ride the you're gonna ride the juco byron young from the a and p grocery store right no doubt man from from the from the dollar general the dollar general not the a and p i apologize to all the dollar generals on every street corner located out there for for misrepresenting (laughs) i think there's nine between (laughs) nine nine between nine between uh uh, Knoxville and if you My just house. drive up 11, I think there's <laughs> nine between Knoxville and Morristown. Just going up 11 W or 11 E. Sorry. All right, go, Rob, give me your best pass rusher. I think it's Barron just based off production, which tells you what you know what kind of a challenge Tennessee's got there because you know there aren't any stats to point to that spot. No, there's not. That's for sure. What's your favorite pals menu or favorite item on the menu? That was that was Big, a throwaway question. B- Big pal and a Frenchie fry. Rob Lewis, last time you had pals was? Uh, I can't even remember. 30, 30 years. That's terrible. I, I saw John Fulkerson on campus leaving practice Tuesday, and he had a light blue, baby blue pals T-shirt on. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a Big Pal with bacon and cheese, Frenchie fry, and a strawberry shake. Are you surprised that Crouch and Henry T have not announced their transfer destinations? No, because, I mean, they can't go through spring, and, and none of these places can – take them yet so like why not wait and just see what happens like if you're henry t like unless you're going to bama like and and right now like, there's a lot of chatter out there that bama may not take him you know i mean like i've heard anything from he stick for bama to florida to ohio state yeah and i was with crouch you've heard everything from michigan michigan state to north Carolina, miami miami yeah uh, all right, last question here. Thoughts on a new strength coach? Has AJ Artis' departure had any kind of negative impact? And, and this is not a knock so. on AJ Artis, but I'm going to say no, not a big negative impact. And the biggest reason why for me, Rob Lewis, he did not have that summer to really bond with those guys because of the COVID deal last year. So he was he was their head guy during the season, but it's different than being the head guy in the you know in the spring and the summertime when you get their full attention. He never had that to really build that bond around him. 
those kids liked him. I'm not saying they didn't like him, but I don't, I think his impact was somewhat minimized because of the timing of his full-time hiring and, and the quarantine and COVID a year ago. And I would also, I mean, I would, and this nothing against Coach Arnest, but I would also guess it's, it was a needed change because I would imagine because of the way he plays offense that Josh Heupel is stressing a lot of different things in the in strength and conditioning than the previous staff was just based off the style of play. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And we all knew when Josh Heupel brought his guy from Central Florida, that guy and A.J. Artis were not going to coexist as some kind of co strength coaches for the football program. It just, it just wasn't going to work that way. And I think everybody saw the writing on the wall with that one uh, whenever that, that move was made and, and when Coach Heupel brought uh, his guy with him from Central Florida. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Blue Water Climate Control VolQuest.com mailbag podcast. Don't forget their special promotion going on right now. Jump on to BlueWaterClimateControl.com. Find out how you can get registered to win uh, tickets to – Uh, season tickets for football this fall and um, don't forget to check out our friends for all your repair needs at blue water climate control for rob lewis and austin price i'm brent hubs thanks for joining us on this thursday have a great day everybody